guys, we're here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2024 Lexus NX 350F Sport. And a big thanks to Cameron and the rest of the management and staff here at Lexus of Wesley Chapel for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new premium car or SUV in the Wesley Chapel Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Cameron. And for those of you guys who don't know, the NX has been a compact luxury crossover SUV sold by Lexus since 2015. The second generation NX that you see here was released in 2022, and for 2024, Lexus has changed up the interior patterns and colors. The remote parking feature is now available on both hybrid models, and the 450 Plus F Sport is now available with both a standard sunroof and a panoramic moonroof. There are six trims for the 2024 NX, ranging from the 250 base, which is 39,000 bucks, all the way up to the $60,000 450 Plus F Sport. Here we have the 350 F Sport sitting right in the middle of the pack with a $48,000 base price. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front, we had full LED headlamps and fog lights. We have an LED daytime running light up front too. Looks like a halogen turn signal up front, but everything else completely LED. The front styling, I heavily prefer this NX over the RX with that buck tooth, whatever you like to call it, design up top, especially for the F Sport trim with this white metallic paint color. We don't get functional airflow in the corners, but with this black trim, it does look very aggressive with a bronze theme for the front lip spoiler. We don't get a 360 degree camera or front facing camera or front parking sensing, but again, this is a sub $50,000 base price. So we're prioritizing both performance and the interior features, which we'll check out in one second. The wheel and tire setup with the F Sport, we get these black 20 inch trims wrapped in Bridgetone Alenza all season tires, dimensions being 235.50 R20. And with the black theme and black lug nuts, it looks really premium with this white metallic paint color. We have a gray F Sport badge in the corner, black contrasted mirrors. You don't get the camera on them, no 360. Gotta go for the higher trims or the optional equipment group to get the 360. Blind spot monitoring on the glass. We don't get the actual door handles. It's been a theme throughout the Lexus lineup. We do get smart access for all four doors, just a button inside of this faux door handle on both sides of the door. More body color trim for the rear wheel well, same rear wheel and tire setup. The only difference is a smaller brake caliper. The gas cap is not pushed open. I'll show you the latch is inside. Full LED taillights, just like the RX, the brake light continues all for the center. Lexus underneath it. Shout out Lexus of Wesley Chapel for helping make this review possible. No rear parking sensing either. That's a head scratcher. I would expect that for around a $50,000 price point. NX 350 badge, all wheel drive underneath it. We can take a squat back here get a good look at the diffuser and dual exhaust tips. And speaking of the dual exhaust tips, let's fire up this 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder sold by Lexus for the 2024 NX350 F Sport. And it sounds okay cranking out 275 horsepower, 317 pound feet of torque, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. You can expect this all wheel drive, about 4,000 pound SUV to get the 60 in the mid six second range, making it a pretty good performer, but considering the power figures, not quite as quick as some of the German competition. Anyway, hydraulic struts are appreciated. We have an aluminum stick connecting the two strut towers together, helping out the handling quite a bit, which you'll check out once we take this car out for a drive. We'll take one more step back, walk around this 2024 NX 350F Sport one more time, and let's hop inside and see what we get with one of the best luxury SUVs in the sub $50,000 price point. Up top, we get soft touch material stitching in the center, gushy soft leather armrest, button for both the outside and the inside function of the door. We can't show you guys the dual pane front windows, but I can promise you they're dual panes. Lock and unlock, power folding mirrors, four-way adjustable with some solid storage down below. You'll fit a six inch sub and a 24 ounce water bottle in front of it with some additional storage in this grab handle area. 
the materials down here are hard plastic unlike the rx but really not a big deal the seats are very well bolstered the f sports have some of the best bolstered seats in the business i just wish that they were power adjustable bolsters so if you're a little bit larger than say 200 pounds you can loosen the bolsters up and still stay comfortable that's one thing i would have to say if you're over 200 pounds i wouldn't recommend the f sport simply because of the more aggressive seats which are not yet adjustable you can still adjust the lumbar control you can recline drop lift and slide the seats the headrests say f sport on them and taking a step inside we have an f sport nameplate and taking a step inside put on the brake engine start stop and everything fires right to life but although this is a little bit of a smaller interior than the rx you really can't tell by a whole lot we'll see how it is when we hop out in the back seat but as far as front seat space it's very comparable the steering wheel is basically the exact same out of the f sport 500h we just reviewed for the rx thick cell 10 and 2 perforated 9 and 3 area no flat bottom but it says f sport down below stitched horn soft touch horn itself loud and aggressive you can adjust the heads up display with these controls but no adjustability for the infotainment we just get a digital speedo with a tack that goes to about 6200 rpm cooling on the left side fuel level on the right the gauge display does change up depending on the drive mode you're in but outside of the drive modes you can't really adjust the gauge display at all we'll start the review off in eco mode try out sport and sport plus and you'll see what the differences are we get the volume and skip controls on the left side with the cruise control and lane keep assist on the right we get the magnesium feeling plastic paddle shifters the stocks have a really satisfying click auto headlamps auto high beams fog lights and auto rain sensing wipers that's appreciated on a sub fifty thousand dollar base price that and a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel fuel cap release trunk release interior brightness and an additional cubby down here we have the same thing on the rx so i didn't show you guys if you happen to see that review you throw an ashtray in here if you're a smoker pretty convenient down below you guys can hopefully get a good look at the aluminum outline pedals and a massive sized dead pedal we get all padded trim for the dashboard we don't get the massive 14 inch touchscreen that we had on the rx just a 9.8 inch screen here and it is subscription based for the navigation unfortunately so as always i can't show you guys the navigation for the toyotas or the lexus cars but you can take my word for it it's one of the best systems in the business the response is fantastic music phone vehicle settings you have driving assist trip information torque distribution tire pressure and vehicle alert settings too my personal favorite would be to look at the torque distribution for this review we get heated seats no ventilated seats dual zone automatic front climate control defrosters underneath the adjustments for the front climate right here with hard stocks that's appreciated the vent controls are touch sensitive adjustments but at least we have hard buttons for the actual climate control you see everything else we have available down over here lane departure safe exit assist blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert and you can have the max heat for the comfort and convenience or silent interesting you can see everything else that we have available heads up display i'll show you guys that real quick hopefully you can pick it up on camera with our lane keep assist information right next to it air vents beneath it we get stitched leather for the area where our knee will often hit wireless charging pad nice storage slot usb a and c port we can open up this compartment too and it exposes quite a bit of space with felt additional 12 volt underneath the gear starter controls the eight speed automatic transmission the backup camera let's check it out very high resolution guidance lines and trajectory no 360 unfortunately it is available as an option but not a standard feature on the 350 f sport so throw right back in the park you just press this button we return right back to our home screen you can turn off the traction control snow mode electron parking brake with brake hold hill descent control and you can turn off the auto engine start stop which we will for the purpose of this review two cup holders you'll fit 24 ounce bottles in there gucci soft leather armrest and it opens in both directions just like it did on the rx very convenient feature and just like on the rx you'll fit over 12 12 ounce cans in here so like i said even though this is a compact versus the mid-size rx you really don't necessarily have to go for the rx unless you're just say way 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 too big for a compact suv but if you're under say six four six five under 240 250 pounds you should be perfectly fine in a vehicle of this size i was actually impressed with how much space is back here at least with the front seat we'll see again how it is when we hop out back the glove box it's outlined hard plastic the dashboard is soft though line felt for the glove box you'll fit 25 to 30 license plates you should be able to fit two pairs of shoes with no problem frameless auto dimming rear view mirror with three garage home link settings on it the interior lights are led cool we can open up the sunroof 
it opens up pretty quickly. It's not a panoramic, unfortunately, but it goes out almost to the end of the front row. Poking our way out of here. Pretty nice day today in Wesley Chapel. A little bit cloudy, but around 60 degrees. Definitely can't complain for January. We can shut this roof right up. Leave the shade open so when we hop out back, you guys can see how much light is brought into the cabin. But that's about it, at least for the front seat of this 2024 Lexus NX 350F Sport. Let's take a quick look at this window sticker. See any features that I may have missed? You guys can pause and take a look. Fuel economy, almost 25 MPGs, 48, 315 for the base price, 400 bucks for the power rear door, 500 for the premium paint, 1100 for the moonroof, 450 for the wireless phone charger and digital key, 330 for the AWFL and cargo mat, 75 bucks for the cargo net, 25 for the key glove, 1150 for the destination totals us out at 52,345. So we are getting up there in price, but for the money, this is a loaded SUV. And as you'll see, once you take it out for a drive, it can perform as well. The headliner is a more premium material, but it's not the suede Alcantara that we had on the 500H F Sport for the RX. Taking a step out back, again, it's a button for the rear door handle, same thing to get out. We get soft touch up top, stitching in the center, gushy soft for the armrest. Auto one touch window, lock and unlock, and we get two Lexus speakers on the door panel. Pretty narrow storage, Beal fit car accessories and 24 ounce water bottle in front of it. The rear seats, the padding does not go out to the door frame, but they're decently bolstered, perforated rear seats, air vents, looks like massive legroom. Again, I'm a little bit over six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings, and I still have four or five inches of knee room, headroom. Wow, I have like three inches of headroom. The RX 500H we reviewed in this channel had the moonroof. So I only had about an inch of headroom left over. This gives me two or three, while still giving me four or five inches of knee room. Unbelievably spacious. I was not expecting the back seat of the NX to be just about the exact same as the RX. We can check out the recline function. That was the full recline. So in the full recline, that's when I would have four inches of headroom. If I lifted it up to the upright position, I'd probably lose two or three, but I would make up about an extra inch of knee room. You mentioned the air vents too. Two USB-C ports down below with a 12 volt map pocket behind both the front seats. Center cubby has a rope, two cup holders, and a very, very soft area to rest your arm. You'll fit 24 ounce bottles in there. The interior lights, LED. Cool, pretty decent amount of light brought into the cabin thanks to the sunroof. Hopefully you pick it up on camera. We get hooks for both of the grab handles in the back seat. Really impressive back seat, guys. I was not expecting it to be this spacious. Taking a step out towards the cargo space. Let's see how much space is offered back here and then take this 2024 NX350 all-wheel drive out for a drive. So the trunk gives you a second to get out of the way so you don't just get doofed in the head. And overall, the cargo space is impressive. Of course, it's not gonna be as large as the RX, but it's surprisingly close for being in class below. The step-in is actually higher. I'm about six feet tall, a little bit over six feet tall, and the step in's almost a foot above my knee. So if you have older or smaller pets, it's gonna be a little bit tougher than the hop back here. The secret storage space, let's check it out underneath the floor mats. Hopefully you guys can pick it up on camera. There is a ton of secret storage in there. You can stack two or three backpacks in there, maybe a suitcase, but overall, I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly how much cargo space is back here with the second row up and with the second row folded down. You get an additional 12 volt in the corner and a cargo net. Good spot for some groceries. Up top, we get two buttons to drop the trunk. This button on the left drops the trunk. This button drops the trunk and locks the vehicle. We don't need a lock, so we'll press the button on the left. It doesn't give you a second to get out of the way, but you've learned by now to get out of the way from the trunk or you are gonna get doofed in the head. That's about it though, guys, for the inside and outside of this beautiful 2024 Lexus NX 350 F Sport all-wheel drive. For the money, yes, we are crossing $50,000 here for this luxury performance SUV, but you're really not compromising anything from the luxury department. And performance-wise, let's take this 2024 NX 350 F Sport out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the only 2024 Lexus NX 350 F Sport all-wheel drive. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. So coming out of the RX 500H F Sport, that vehicle is quick and I like the way that it handled, but this is lighter, more nimble, and just about the exact same power plant outside of the hybrid system. So let's see what it's got. Pretty sensitive throttle in eco mode, but you do have to lean into it to really feel it out. The, ooh, there it is. You barely lean into it and there's a little bit extra power and coming out, ooh. Nice, the brakes feel solid. Throwing it in, there goes my water bottle and coming out. 
Ooh, a little bit of a delay. Okay, so in eco mode, it's definitely not sport tuned. It takes a second for the transmission to respond and whatnot. But the steering feels good in eco mode. Very good. Sharp and direct. Reminds me of something that you get from, say, like Audi. Not quite as sharp and direct as BMW, at least not in eco mode. Let's try it out in sport plus and see what changes up. Steering does get a little bit heavier. Throttle gets more sensitive. Brakes feel about the exact same. Ride quality is good. Yeah, guys, this thing feels good. Very nimble in sport, but you're still keeping the excellent ride quality. You don't hear just about any wind noise. Road noise also just about non-existent. I'm not really digging this white paint, but other than that, no complaints. Turning radius is great on the gas. Oh, powerful. Woo, through the turn too, it grips really well. Brakes feel good, nimble. Yeah, honestly, if I was looking for a luxury premium SUV, I think this might be the best one available now with a four cylinder. Obviously, I'm not comparing this to like a X3 M40i, but compared to like a four cylinder X3, I think I like this better, especially considering the difference in price. More twisties. Ooh, that is really good handling for a vehicle around 4,000 pounds. Let's try one out off the line. See what the zero 060 would feel like. It's claimed to be around six and a half seconds, which isn't the best considering the power numbers, but let's try a slight brake torque and let's go. Oh, that's quick. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, if, that feels quicker than six and a half seconds. I'll do some research, see if I've ever seen anybody get it a little bit quicker. The handling is just so ridiculously good. Not quite sure what that ding is every time I come out of the turn, but overall, guys, this is an unbelievable balance of luxury, performance, and styling. This is a great looking SUV. I think it looks better than the RX we just came out of. I think it drives no worse, and I think with the quicker platform and a base price about $10,000 cheaper, I would 150% recommend checking out an NX350. Would I necessarily recommend checking out the F-Sport? I mean, it does look a lot better, but from a performance standpoint, you don't really get a whole lot on top of the standard 350. So yes, I would recommend a 350 all-wheel drive all day, every single day. But if you want to look a little bit cooler, pay an extra couple thousand bucks and get it with the F-Sport. And a big thanks to Cameron and the rest of the management and staff here at Lexus of Wesley Chapel for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new premium car or SUV in the Wesley Chapel area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Cameron. And huge thanks to all you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you'd like to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.